Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I'm very happy to be here today to present a local perspective in this fight against child labor. I was invited by ILO to present a good practice in combating child labor through education in the agricultural livestock sector. The Chakuti system of education in Samburu County. Chekuti is a Samburu word. It means shepherd, the children who go out to look after livestock. Samburu County is in Kenya, northern Kenya. It's in an arid area. It is inhabited by pastoralist communities. 86% of the people in Samburu County have not gone to school. Uh, the government has tried to provide education in Samburu, but the enrollment levels are very low because of the pastoralist way of life. Most children are out looking after livestock. This means that 60% of our children are still in the fields engaged in child labor. The Chekuti children or shepherds, they go out in the morning to take the livestock very far, as far as 20 or 10 or 20 kilometers away, depending on the season and the avail availability of pasture. And they come back very late in the evening. These children are exposed to a lot of hazards when they go out to herd the livestock. They are exposed to wild animals. They are also exposed to snake bites. They are even exposed to armed bandits and extreme temperatures. Some, some of these children have to carry around guns in order to protect themselves and their livestock. And we have many cases of children who have been killed while taking care of livestock in northern Kenya. The situation gets even worse during the drought because the children, the children have to drive the cattle even further. In the evening when the children bring home the livestock, of course they count the livestock and they make sure the livestock are all there and then they rush to the non-formal school or the Chekuti school. The beauty of the Chekuti school is that it is not rigid because the children attend classes only for a few hours. The timetable is also very flexible. There's no school uniform required. The children just come in with the clothes, traditional clothes that they used to have their livestock. Then the children just learn the basic education, just like the other children in the formal school. And then they only, they only learn what is important for survival of children in the pastoralist communities. There is no strict timetable or curriculum. They use the curriculum of the formal schools. This is because the government has not yet come up with a uh, curriculum for the non-formal educational Chekuti schools. Then learning only takes place for two or three hours depending on the season. Most of these schools don't have any electricity, so the children have to make do with a small amount of light in the evening when they, they are learning. These children are very bright and they are eager to learn if they can be given the opportunity. Our organization has so far established two Chekuti schools and I'm proud to say that the response has been overwhelming. We have had more than 80 children in one class and 95 in another class. And um, it has been even overwhelming for the teacher because those numbers are really big for one teacher. Through ILO funding, um, uh, we are, our organization is a member, uh, a partner organization of ILO. And they were 
able to help us to set up the schools. So the ILO funding pays the teach allowance to the teacher, some learning materials, and it helps to set up the classes and provide solar lighting and furniture for the classes. The Kenya government has helped us a lot in since that it has recognized non-formal education as a means of bringing pastoralist children to education. Through the 2005 sessional paper on education and training, it acknowledges that uh, there has to be alternative education delivery channels for children in disadvantaged communities, especially pastoralist communities in northern Kenya. The solution to uh, eradicating worse forms of child labor in my community, which involves children working in herders, had child herders, will entail establishment of more non-formal schools. If we can establish more schools, if one school has 85 children and we have 10 non-formal schools in the area, that means bringing 850 more children to education and also reducing the number of children who are engaged in child labor. Um, the Chekuti system of education is not only based in Samburu County. Some other areas in Garissa and Mandera in the pastoralist areas also have their own form of Chekuti schools. And up to now, uh, 2004, in 2004, there were only five schools which started in Samburu, but now we have 91 in the whole of Kenya. And I know everybody, the question on, on your minds is how do you, will we sustain this? I'm very happy to say that the government of Kenya has taken up the initiative to come up with an informal education policy. And we are guaranteed that once the NGOs establish the schools, the government takes it up completely. They pay the teacher, they provide learning materials, they provide lighting, and this will promote sustainability for these schools. The challenge is now who will help us to establish the schools. And as I finish, I just want to challenge the international organizations here, NGOs, UN bodies, to have faith in small community-based organizations like mine, because ILO has made it possible for me to be here today and to talk to you and to show you that even CBOs and small organizations can do good work because they are the organizations on the ground. I have a short video, and I thank you very much. So we decided to come up with an initiative which will be able to solve our own problems in our own way instead of depending on outsiders to come and do it for us. Chekuti is a Samburu town. It means herders or shepherds, the children who go out to look after animals. Education for the herders or the shepherds. They come to class in the evening just after taking their livestock home and they come to, there's no school uniform, there's no set time, there's, it's very flexible. We don't tell them stop your way of life and go to the formal school. They come to these schools and then later on some of them even transit to the uh, normal schools. Others, they get the basic education which enables them to read and write. To, to even communicate a little bit, to use their mobile phones, and even transact in businesses. This system does not need anybody to recruit the children. We always put them in the formal schools, because the formal schools are in a central position, so the children can be able to walk from their homes to the formal school after the other children have left. Once the children hear that there's a Chekuti school, they come on their own because they are thirsty for education. They want to get an education in a culturally sensitive way. Chekuti is culturally sensitive to the pastoralist communities. 
That is why it's attracting more children than the formal school. And later on, these children transit to the formal schools. We have found that the children who come to the Chekuti classes are the very brightest children we have in the pastoralist communities because the pastoralists don't believe in taking their bright children to the school. These children are bright, they know how to take care of the animals, they know the, where the pasture is, they know how to protect the, the animals from invaders. When these children come to the class, they are top. They are top in the class. We have found that all of them are the top. Even the teacher has a problem in ranking them. And when these children transit into the formal school, these children are really, really bright. They are always on top of their class. <laughs> The Chekuti system is open to all ages, all sexes, everybody who is willing to learn as long as they are out there looking after livestock. I've been able to see children who are out there herding. I've never been to school. Now, in formal schools, some of the children are now in class seven. Next year, they'll be doing their standard eight exams. The Chekuti system has been very important in helping to curb early marriages and FGM. Because once the girls come to the school, they will take longer to marry them off because they are getting an education. Especially the girls who transit from the Chekuti education to the formal schools. There is one girl called Angela. She's now in class six. She's 14 years old. She would have been married long, long ago if it was not for the Chekuti education. We are determined to see that girl through, even to secondary school and the university level. At first, when we started the school, we had a very big problem. Like in the Elkilorici community, the Morans would come to the school gate every evening to wait for the girls to come out of the classes. Uh, because the Morans believe that the girls are theirs and they have no right being in the education. And they would intimidate them and they would uh, harass them. But the community leaders came in and they helped us to, uh, to do away with that. Now, even those Morans have joined the Chekuti classes. The Chekuti system is quite challenging to implement because the children come in in the evening. It's dark, there's no electricity in our area, and then they come from very far. They have to walk like two kilometers or more to come to the class. So at night when the children are walking out of the class, it's risky for them because they might encounter wild animals and even raiders. And some of the schools don't have any power, even solar power. So the children just learn for one hour and then they have to go home. And uh, that, that means they don't get sufficient time to learn because that's only one hour per day, while the other children learn like eight hours per day. So something needs to be done to support these children, to get lighting, to get a meal, and then a problem of drought because of the persistent droughts in our communities. From the month of January to April, the enrollment levels in the Jeputi classes goes, goes down because they have to walk many, many miles to take their livestock out in search of pasture. And this has led to many dropouts from the Chekuti system. If these children can be able to move together with their uh, Chekuti class, it can help a lot because they go to communal places which are well known. But the challenge is that the government does not help us in establishing new classes. The establishment is left to NGOs, but very few organizations have the capacity to start up this organization, uh, the integrity classes, because it needs a lot in terms of uh, learning materials and books and uh, desks and paying the teacher until the, the, the government comes in 
I would say that the deputy has really contributed a lot. First, to bring education to the children of pastoral communities, which have been left behind for a long time. Our illiteracy levels are up to 86%. Those are the highest in Kenya. That's for Samburu County. So if these levels can be brought down even to 70% by initiating more charity schools and bringing more of these shepherds to school, I would say we have done a great deal to promote education and eventually to curb child labor. Because herding has been found to be one of the worst forms of child labor. And gradually, as the children come to school, the numbers of children in the, in the, out there herding will go down. As a member of the County Assembly of Sanduri, I plan to bring a motion to support Jekuti education. It should be included in the education policy of the county government of Samburu, such that they will help us to establish Jekuti schools in at least every village in Samburu, which after that will be taken up by the government. That will really help in bringing that education to the pastoralist children of Samburu who have been left behind for a long, long time. That is my mission. I think Irene Leshore is a brave woman. Let us give her a Don't get up out of your seats. We will have 25 minutes, but uh, we will have some um, the mic, yes, th thank you. We will have some uh, practical information.